Good morning. Thank you for joining us today. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Please bow your heads. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us here safely. Please watch over all the families in attendance and their family members. Please bless the union of Kathy and Rodney. Allow them to be loving and patient and kind with one another and allow their love to grow stronger with years to come. Cover their marriage and their families and allow them to be happy with each other to the end of time. Allow every family here to be blessed and enjoy themselves today and allow us all to return home safely and find everything in decency and in order. And even though we're celebrating a marriage today, we remember all that God has done for us and where God has brought us from and we thank you and we praise you for all that you've done and we praise you for what you're going to do in days to come. The best is yet to come. Thank you so much for all you've done. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Friends, we've come today at the invitation of Rodney Lee Lefevre and Catherine Jeanette Palmieri to share in the joy of their wedding. This outward celebration we are privileged to be present for is an expression of the inner love and devotion they have in their lives for one another. God loves us, and he created us to love him and others. Our lives find completion only when we receive love and then give love in return. Together, we can become what we could never be separately. Marriage is an example of this. Marriage is of God. Rodney and Kathy have come today desiring to be united in this sacred relationship. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? I do. Thank you. At this time, we're going to have Lisa Diggs come, and she's going to share a scripture from Mark chapter 10, verses 6 through 9. But at the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one. Therefore, what God has joined together, let, not, let man not separate. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. 45. The two, you may be seated. <laughs> the two become one. This is the principle of marriage, where two that are separate now become one. Kathy and Rodney today came in here today as two separate. They will leave here today as one in the eyes of God, and that's exactly what God desires from us. I'm going to share a scripture with you this morning, then I'm going to turn around and I'll face the bride and groom, because and, uh, you're here to see them anyway, and we'll, we'll conduct the wedding uh, vows in that manner. But let me just read for you from the book of Colossians, chapter 3, verses 12 through 19. And this serves as a powerful reminder, not just for all of us, but especially for our bride and groom. A powerful reminder of what God wants for us, for one another, especially in the bonds of marriage. It says this, Colossians 3, verse 12, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, with kindness, with humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. I heard a quote once that said, marriage is the union of two good forgivers. That's what we need in marriage. And over all of these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Verse 15 continues, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Since as members of one body, you are called to peace and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or in deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Forgiveness, compassion, Thanksgiving, three traits necessary in marriage if we're going to make it through. So Rodney, Kathy of the, th of the world's great institutions, the home, the church, and the state, the home is the oldest and most sacred. 
The Bible teaches us that marriage is a holy institution originating in the divine wisdom and love of God who said it is not good for the man to be alone. He said, I will make a helper suitable for him. And again, who said after the first marriage, for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and they will become one flesh. Marriage, all marriages, your marriage and every marriage here today is fully intended by God to be a powerful and uncompromising symbol of Jesus Christ's relationship with the believer. God desires that when we and all those you two encounter in your life's journey look at your relationship, we would see not only the precious and genuine love of a man and a woman, but also a picture of God's great love for us. And in Scripture, we find an interesting comparison between a husband and a wife and between Christ and his bride, the church. So within the framework of your marriage, we should see these vibrant truths at work. The same truth we can see in God's relationship with believers. First, Hebrews 13.5 13, says this. Jesus says, never will I leave you or forsake you. Never. True love does not abandon. Not even when you're at your angriest, when challenges become overwhelming and your marriage will face times like that. All marriages face times like that. Like Christ, never could you entertain the thoughts of leaving or forsaking. This is not an option. In John 15, 13, he writes, Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. Jesus said it, and then Jesus did it. You too need to have this self-sacrificing kind of love. Though primarily the call of husbands, godly wives must have the same Christ-like willingness to sacrifice it all. Understand this as we look at Ephesians 5, verse 25 and 28. It says, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. Similarly, though we often and wrongly think of submission as solely the duty of the wife, Ephesians 5.21 tells all believers, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. And James 4 reminds us most importantly that we submit to God. Rodney, Kathy, I do not know what your future holds, but I know he who holds your future. It is he, Jesus who will hold your marriage together even in the most difficult of times. Let me share this quote from you from author Timothy Hall. Certainly marriage isn't for the faint of heart. For those who have vowed to love one another, there's no such thing as falling out of love. The labor of love is not like walking along some high place where the slightest gust of wind is likely to cast us down. It is more like working in a field. Feet solidly planted, sometimes in the heat of day, sometimes in the cool breeze of evening. There's no danger of falling, only of giving up the work. In the same way, we must put aside the fantasy that love is some state of mind, some emotional thing that we have no control over. Love is a labor. It's something we must work at and never, ever give up. I'm going to ask William Diggs Jr. if he would come now and share with us from the book of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes 4, chapter 4, verses 9 through 12. Two are better than one, because they have a good return for their work. If one falls down, his friend can help him up. But pity the man who falls and has no one to help him up. Also... If two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Thank you, William. A cord of three is not quickly broken. When we talk about marriage, we often think husband and wife. Let Jesus be the third. Let him be the one that brings it all together. And as you grow closer to Christ, individually, you will undoubtedly grow closer to each other. And that 
cohort of three, Rodney and Kathy and Jesus, will never fail. It will never fail. At this time, the bride and the groom are going to partake of communion. So excuse us for a moment. We'll play some, some light music, and we're going to partake of communion together. May I please have the rings? Do you, Rodney, take Kathy to be your wife? I do. Then repeat, well, then we are going to exchange rings at this time. The rings are an unbroken circle, the emblem of eternity, and the gold, the emblem of that which is least tarnished and most enduring. They are to show how lasting and imperishable is the faith now mutually pledged by the giving and receiving of these rings. May these rings also serve as an outward sign to the world about you, a clear sign that you have given yourselves faithfully together in holy marriage, with these emblems of purity and devotion, you do each other wed, and now and forever seal these vows. So Rodney, repeat after me with this ring. With this ring. I thee wed. I thee wed. And give thee my love and devotion. And give thee my love and devotion. And now the same thing for you, Kathy. With this ring. With this ring. I thee wed. I thee wed. And give thee my love and devotion. Rodney, I'm going to ask you to repeat these wedding vows after me. And you say them to her, not to me, though. <laughs> I, Rodney, take you, Kathy. I, Rodney, take thee, Kathy. To be my wife. To be my wife. To love and to trust. To love and to trust. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. For sickness and in health. And as we continue to grow, and as we continue to grow in our love for each other, in our love for each other, I shall love you with my whole self. I shall love you with my whole self. I will listen and speak the truth to you. I will listen and speak the truth to you. And seek to live each day. <laughs> seek to live each day. <laughs> seek to live each day as a gift of God. As a gift from God. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. Did I leave anything out? We're good. All right. <laughs> Do you, Kathy, take Rodney to be your husband? I do. Then repeat these vows after me. I, Kathy, take you, Rodney. I, Kathy, take you, Rodney. To be my husband. To be my husband. To love and to trust. To love and to trust. 
from this day forward. From this day forward. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. For rich or for poor. For rich or for poor. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. And as we continue to grow in our love for each other. And as we continue to grow in our love for each other. I will love you with my whole self. I will love you with my whole self. Listen and speak the truth to you. Listen and speak the truth to you. And seek to live each day as a gift of God. And seek to live each day as a gift of God. As long as we both shall live. I charge you both, as you hope for happiness in your marriage, to be true to these vows that you have made to each other. From this day forward, you begin life anew with larger responsibilities. Never in history have there been greater pressures aligned against marriage and the family. Only by sincere and complete commitment to the principles of the Word of God and a total acknowledgement of the Lordship of Jesus Christ in your lives, in your marriage, and in your home, can you hope to find fulfillment and happiness? Be true to him, and you'll be true to each other. Draw near to him, and you'll draw near to each other. And he will draw near to you and shower his love and his blessings upon you. Inasmuch as Rodney and Kathy have consented together in holy wedlock and have witnessed the same before God in this company and have pledged their faith to each other, by the authority committed to me as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I now pronounce you husband and wife, no longer two, but one, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, whom God has joined together. Let no one tear apart. Rodney, you may kiss your bride. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me a great deal of pleasure to present for the very first time Mr. and Mrs. Rodney Lefevre.